Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevail. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the Lord. I'm here glad you're in church today. And you're about to receive information, knowledge about fear not. Number three, praise God. Let's open up with prayer. Let's thank the Holy Spirit for being our teacher. Lord God, we thank you in Jesus' name for giving us the Holy Spirit who will teach us all things. We ask the Holy Spirit to be our teacher tonight, today to give us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. We give you praise and glory for it, and all the people of God said amen. 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 We want to get started and get right into this because it's quick, it's short, and it's very powerful. And if you take the notes and you, be, and you do study through it, you will start realizing there's information in the scriptures that will help you not to fear through examples of others in Jesus' name. Okay, so in 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Okay? And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in your heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Isn't that good news? Praise the Lord. And so... So, you want to be with people according to their heart, or you're going to be with them according to their fear. You're going to hang out with people who are either for you, or you're going to hang out with people in their fear. Okay? Jonathan's armor bearer had to be connected to his heart. How many, how many are starting to see something here? So, there are people in your lives that will bring fear upon you and you connect with that rather than what let me just say it like this I've had people try to intimidate me anybody ever have anybody try to intimidate you what do you do do you just let them intimidate you or do you stand up for righteousness sake and declare no you don't speak that way to me I've had that happen to me, to a person that the Holy Spirit gave me what, was going, what I was going to say, to who I was going to say it before I said it within the hour. And the person says, well, you don't have to be angry. I'm not angry. I'm adamant. You do not ever treat me that way again. They had a different respect for me afterwards. You can't allow people to put their fear in you. You've got to put up, no, you don't talk to me that way. Right? So, you want to be according to the person's heart. And is that person's heart with you, for you? Or is that person always speaking negatively, always talking about what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Do you want to connect with that? Or do you want to connect with somebody's heart that's true and faithful in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay? In the book of Daniel 11 and 32, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Doing good things for God. Amen? So God's looking for valiant people who are tenacious and fearless, and will do exploits in the name of Jesus. Are you one of those people? Are you one of those people who are tenacious and fearless? So if you say, I can't do this, well, then fear is holding you back. Say, so, well, I, I don't know how to do it at the moment, but I'm going to learn to have it figured out. 
I will search out people who know how to do such and such so I can do it too. Amen. And so don't let fear get in your way. Get tenacious. Now nah, I can do this. Uh-huh. How many hats can you wear? Jack of all trades, right? But master of none. Well, no, no, no. You want to be, I know how to do everything. It's amazing that you have the insights coming to you by God in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay? Then in 1 Samuel 13, verse 5 through 7. Now, this is interesting. I hope you guys have been reading your Bible so you know where this is at. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Mishmash, eastward from Beth Avon. That's a lot of people. And when the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were what? Distressed. Then the people did hide themselves in caves and thickets and in rocks and high places and in pits. Can anybody say that they're scared? If you, 36,000 is a big city. But they all are there to kill you. Would you be afraid? These guys were. How come? And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. Isn't this amazing? Some people can be moved by fear by what they see or what they hear. They saw 36,000 people all around them, chariots, horsemen. And they took off. Now, what would you think? If you're, my, you're my soldiers, and that fear, and you leave. <laughs> what do I got to stand with? Nothing. That's what they did. That's what Israel, oh, I'm out of here, buddy. Gone. Because they saw something with their eyes. And they heard the noise and they were fearful. <laughs> what happened to God in their life? Went right out their feet and down the wheel. <laughs> and see, people do that today. And yet, they think, no, no, is this a story? Mm-hmm. Okay. 1 Samuel 13, 19 to 22. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. Now, everybody say, there's nobody there to make you a sword. In all of the land of Israel. Say, that's, you don't have nothing. And you got 36,000 guys ready to pounce upon you and kill you, and you don't even have a sword. Because they were under the fear of the Philistines, right? Well, the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears... But all the Israels went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his shear and his coulter and his axe and his maddox. Okay, so they kept control of their gun law. This is getting to you. Yet they had a file for their maddox and for their coulters and for the forks and for their axes to sharpen the goads, the little pricks, right? Isn't this amazing? So can you see where people are moved into fear by what they see or what they hear? Yeah. So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and with Jonathan, his son was there found. So Jonathan and Saul each had a sword out of all their people. Nobody else has a sword. You might have a pitchfork. You might have a little gold that you can prick something. That's it. But you have a little tiny file that's going to sharpen it. Mm-hmm. This is that same kind of file you can look at fingernails. It isn't going to do much, right? Okay? So people are fearful. They get moved, all right? 17, 1 through 58. This is very powerful. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. This is pretty harsh. And were gathered together Sokoth, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Sokoth and the Ephraim. Okay? And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side 
and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He's pretty tall. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had on uh, greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. So he's carrying it over his arm. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. So we got this guy. He's really got a lot of stuff. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set yourself battle in array. Am not I the Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. This is a lie. Because Israel ended up defeating and uh, they didn't become their servants. Okay? So don't. So this lie, the last part, scared them. You're going to serve me. Okay? I'm your boss. Listen up. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were what? Dismayed and what? Greatly afraid. Do you think if that was you, you would be afraid? See, this is, you've got to compare that with today. Oh, I don't have any money. I don't have a job. What am I going to do? I'm afraid. And what's God trying to tell you? If you seek me first, you get all this stuff. Right? Moving on. Now David was the son of an Ephraite of Bethel, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for old man in the day of Saul. Okay? And the, and the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of the three sons that went to battle were Elab, firstborn, next unto him, and Adab, and the third, Shammah. Okay? And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days and Jesse said unto David, Now take for thy brethren an ephod of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, okay, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Okay, now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Forty days is a long time, right? Okay? David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep and the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. Notice that his father didn't ask him. He commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Okay? And David rose up early and see, the Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper okay, and saluted his brethren. Okay. And he talked with them. Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. Now why isn't he afraid? Everybody else is. And all the men of the earth, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Whoa! Just think of the Goliath as your boss. Hey, what are you afraid of him for? And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel he has come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's household free of taxes in Israel. Like, That's a pretty good present. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the what? Taketh away the what? Reproach from Israel. Okay? For who is this what? 
uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. Let me give you a hint. When he says uncircumcised Philistine, he's saying he does not have a covenant with God. I do. He does not. What do you say when you're in the midst of a problem? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done unto the man that killeth him. And Eli, his older brother, heard him speak unto the men. Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Why comest down hither, with whom thou hast left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. All right. Here comes the enemy to use your own family to get you to get off what's going on. Don't listen to what they say. Listen to what God says. Oh, you can't be doing that. You can't do that. Right? And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Isn't there a reason for what's going on? Most of you go, ah, I'm scared. But not David. Why isn't he afraid? And he turned. Get this part. From him and toward another. I'm no longer listening to your doubt, your unbelief. You're telling me I can't do this. And turned and spoke to someone else. You've got to learn how. Just walk away and get away from that. And spake the same manner. And people answer him after him again in the former manner. There is a reason for what's going on. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and he sent for him. So they're all saying, hey, there's a guy out here who thinks he can beat this Philistine. Okay? And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Notice that David noticed there are people out there that are afraid and sore afraid and dismayed. They don't know what to do. None of you ever had that problem. Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. He's a man of war from his youth. You got any experience? How many of you ever had that told to you? You can't work here. You don't have any experience. Ha! Huh, I got God. I got all the experience. Most people don't think like that. David said to Saul, Thy servants kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. In case you haven't figured it out, there is a cougar running around in Gresham area. Are you going to go after it? No! No, I'm scared! Would you think a bear has claws? Do you think a lion is like a cougar? Hello? This kid, he's a youth. Killed them, right? I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. This is powerful. That's not easy, Jew. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Now, people will tell you, you can't do anything, you're scared to death, you can't afford this, you can't buy that, you're just this and that. No, don't you defy the living God who said I will prosper in everything I put my hand to. Don't you talk to me like that. I know who I am. I'm a child of God. That's what he's saying. Do you say that? Of course you do. Praise the Lord. Thy servant slew. Okay, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me, the Lord that delivered me. Come on, say, the Lord that delivered me out of poverty. The Lord that delivered me. Come on, you got to start thinking. The Lord that delivered me. Me is past tense. Out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Okay, kid, if you want to die, that's up to you. That's where they're at. You've got to start saying, I don't need anybody to tell me why I can't buy my own computer. I can buy my own computer if I want to. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Are you there or is fear gripping you and telling you you can't do this, you're no good, you never amount to hell of beans? What are you going to listen to? No, there's a cause. Come on. Are you seeing the comparison here? Praise the Lord. Saul armed David with his armor and he put on his helmet of brass on his head. He armed him with a coat of mail. Okay? David girded his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. Now, people will always try to help you out, but it may not be what you need. It's important for your understanding. 
Okay? And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even a script, and his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. The guy's got a sword, he's got a shield, he's got an armor bearer, he's got all this protection on his head, on his chest, on his legs, and you know you got as a sling? I've got God. See, I'm going to stop right here. I want you to look at me for a second and just re figure this out. You don't have a college education. You've never done this before. What makes you think you're going to do that? doesn't matter. I've got God. I have the answers. I can pray. God will tell me everything I need to know. Do you put that into practice? No. Well, you better because otherwise that's just a sling. Don't look like you can accomplish anything. I can do all things through Christ. I can do anything. How's that? I know how to talk to him and he gives me answers. Is this making sense? No longer are you in fear anymore. And the Philistines came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. So we got two people out there. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Talk about scaring you. Right? Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Come on. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. Today. I will be rich, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that on the earth may know, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Is the battle of the Lord's? Will he help you? You know, fear tries to grip you, but not anymore. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Okay, now, this had to be impromptu by the, by the Lord. And what's going on? Okay, the Philistine's doing his thing, he's walking towards David, but what is David doing? What's that word? He's running toward the Philistine. Now this is the part that God is at work inside David that you don't realize. Because he's running towards the Philistine, the Philistine is not putting two and two together that this young man is really going to kill him. He doesn't get it. Had he figured out that he was going to kill him and it happened so fast, he would have run off to the side. He wouldn't let the kid come straight at him. But because he's not understanding how the Lord's working with him, he confused him. So he didn't understand he's running because I've got to be close enough to whack him good with my sling, right? But he's running toward So he's like, like what is, what's going on? It's like a lot of these boxers that you've probably seen on TV, they run up to a guy, bam, 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 whack him before he realizes what's happened, knocks him out. This is what David's doing. He's running up towards the Philistine before he figures out what's going on and is prepared to sling and kill him. David put his hand in his bag, turned to the storm, slang it, smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So why he's running, he knows how to do this. He's done this once before. He pulls that out, puts it in a sling. He's slinging, and he's running towards him. Whack! If you're close to your object, you can hit it a lot easier than if you're 30 feet away. Okay, so God has his hand on that stone and makes sure it goes right between his eyes and into his forehead, knocks him out, falls him to the ground. Isn't that good news? Yes, Pastor Robert. So David prevailed. Don't we prevail? Amen. Over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and smote the Philistine, slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Okay? Therefore David ran, stood upon the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, cut off his head thereof, 
and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Now, this happened so fast that the Philistine didn't even draw his sword. See, this is what you got to, you got to see the story. The guy, he's not even uh, prepared to know what the, is happening so fast that he didn't even pull his sword out. Bang! Knocked him out. So, this is where you got to be thinking, when stuff comes against you in fear, you got to be thinking like the Lord, it happened so fast you put a stop to the enemy. And you're prevailing with wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. This is getting good. All right? And the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the enemies until they come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to, and even to Kath and to Ekron. So they didn't stop and become their servants. They ran and fled, right? So David saw a cause and he wanted to fulfill it. Yet the soldiers only saw fear. You've got to get out of the negative attitude. You've got to get out of the way you're thinking. You've got to change your mindset and got to start realizing God is for me, not against me. God is on my side. Amen? And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistine, and they spoiled their tents. They took all the money. They took all the gold. They got promoted by one little boy. You've got to start realizing when you conquer fear, you're going to get promotion. You're going to get all the spoils. Isn't this good news? Amen. And David took the head of the Philistines and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his tent. Isn't this good news? Praise the Lord. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistines, he said to Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, as thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, inquire thou whose son this stripling is. And David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And, and Saul said to him, whose son thou art, thou young man? David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. So we see the story. We know from there on he was promoted his father didn't pay taxes anymore. He got to marry the, the king's daughter, and he got a bunch of riches. So think about the fear that comes to grip you and slow you down. You've got to start thinking, isn't there a cause? Why is the enemy trying to put fear on me so bad so I won't get my, my, my blessings? You've got to think over that and say, whoa, I'm a child of the Most High God. I have a covenant with God. When you start saying that, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I have everything that I have need of. Amen? Amen? Awesome. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for giving us insight to how to stop fear and look for the cause. In the mighty name of Jesus and all the people of God said, yes and amen, amen. amen. So have a great week. Okay. Amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video, and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you. You pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at rider.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.